Hey, okay, let it be known. I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a hunt, this ain't a phone. Grind never stopping, I'm keeping it cold. Unlocking the door with the holy key. You supposed to be this close to me, and hopefully, you understand G.O.D. Maybe this cold, and I'm talking like no degrees. Guys, what's up, man? Welcome back to another episode of It Needed to Be Said. How you feel, man? I feel good, man. We got a lot hey. to get off our chest this situation, man. We got we to yeah, let him hear it. Yeah, man. We got Julius Collins, my co-host. You, you guys know him. You know. Let's get it. Let's get it, man. We had a great first show, man. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for the comments. It's been great. But ever since then, man, like... It I, went crazy, I, right? A lot has happened. It went crazy. It went crazy. You ran track. I even tweeted, this is what we would call a false start. A false right? start? When you see the snippets... And the media went insane. They automatically jumped to a conclusion. Right. You didn't even answer. Right. I just asked a simple question, right? Right. A simple question of, boom, boom, boom. We ain't going to repeat it because we know they're going to go crazy again, right, about the stats. They went absolutely insane when it was solely a question that they didn't even get the answer to. Right. And that's the snippet. And, and to me, like, that's just another situation where my mom always told me, you never judge a book by its cover. You know? And the whole thing ain't even out yet. Right. You know? So... You just be patient, man. I, I just feel like a lot of people just overreacted for no reason. Like they they saw what you said and they right. really and they really didn't see what I said. You know, right. so right. a lot of people are just acting off emotion. But but that's a problem, you know, that the media and the journalists have to deal with, right? A lot of them has got they've gotten to the point where they, they don't care about reporting the truth. That's how they make their money, man. Right. That's how you that's how you make your money. That's how you stay relevant, you right. know, in it's, the business. Because people wanna people wanna see the bad stories. People wanna see stuff like that. You yeah. know? So So they 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 abandoned the truth because they didn't have the answer to it. They automatically went to hey, I gotta be automatic. And it went to I wanna be the first to drop this story, right? Not exactly. I wanna be the one who get it correct. I wanna exactly. be the first one that dropped this story. So the snippets went crazy. The snippets went crazy, man. So with that being said, I, I feel like we both can agree we we had to add a, add a segment to this, right? We had to add a segment to this podcast for all of the media pundits, all of the crazy <laughs> fans, everybody who automatically became a philosopher or a commentator or an expert in the realm of football and podcasts. We had to add a section. We need to get it off of our chest. So for that purpose, you know, all the media, they went crazy, the craze. Fans, the people jumping in our DMs, talking crazy, right? Man, by the way, I got death threats. <laughs> crazy. From every social media that I own. Every social media account I own, I got death threats on. Insane. Which, which is ridiculous. Which I love it, you know? Right, right. I just, in And, I and sidebar, we heard, look, we read some of the craziest jokes. The black jokes what were funny to me. Like, I think we next time we do the episode, we should do a competition on who had the corniest black joke. People, right. we've been black for years. Exactly. We've been dark skinned for years. We have heard every black joke there is in the book. There's no running from this. We right? can't run I, from it. This I is not know. the 80s. This is not the 80s with the Mario Peebles or, right. or whoever else with the curly hair and the light skin. Black is in. Wesley killed that game in the 90s. He, exactly. he put us in. So the black jokes, I, I definitely think we should go in our DMs. I actually try to stay in the sun to, to get darker. To get so, darker. So that's, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't try to escape it. But Here. no, but no, it was a lot said on these different um, shows on television. You know, we don't have to name a specific one. And for that very reason, we came up with the new segment called right. Get It Off Your Chest. So this segment is basically anything between us, not you guys, right. between us that we basically we just want to get off our chest about the last about the previous podcast. Right. You know, so I'm I'm going to allow you to go first, man. I go first. I got a lot to get off my chest. My issue and what I have to get off my chest is directed towards the media, right? right? The media as a whole, not, not necessarily, oh, they're doing bad reporting, but this, this concept of shut up and play. We've mm. seen it happen before. Mm. And no matter how they try to shape it, try to sugar water it down, whatever mm. they want to do to it, to, to give the appearance that that's not what took place, that's exactly what those comments were because automatically they went mm. to – you're on a team, you're active, you're rich, you're getting paid. Right. We don't want to hear your opinion. Exactly. Right? Which is absolutely insane. So to me, that came off of that same old concept of shut up and play. Oh, you the should not situation have with uh, LeBron, right? Right, LeBron. Right. And then uh, Chris Caruso, I believe, and J.J. Reddick had to check him, and Draymond Green went on his podcast about it. That shut up and play stuff, man, you got to chill with that. That is 
that's not the way to go about it. What right. you're telling them is you're entertaining right. enough, and we want you to go out there and put your life on the line, right. put your, your 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 financial well being, your family's financial well being on the line. But we right. don't give two shits about your opinion. Exactly. You're rich. You should not have an opinion. You're rich. You're less than a human being, even with some of the fans. I don't even I don't I, even think they're really your fans. Just people who go on social media, the trolls, and they we don't. Let me make it clear. We, we're not afraid of trolls. We don't have a problem with it. We actually embrace it. So keep, exactly. keep the comments and the and the and the and the slander coming. We enjoy it, right? Exactly. But to those people who feel like you're less than human, and then when you respond, they come back with, "Oh, the, do the dolphins know about this?" Right. So now they want to try to jeopardize your job, right? Exactly. And jeopardize your family. But they just job. don't know that's not jeopardizing anything, right? You know. So, but they they want to give the appearance that you're less than human. Like this stuff doesn't matter to you. So, but when you respond, is you're not being professional. But just like you say, though, like you know, people expect me just to play football because that is what I'm being paid to do. But a lot of people just don't understand, like. Like, I got a brand to build. You know, right. I want to show people I'm able to talk on different platforms. Right. Like, I'm very versatile at right. doing different things. So, right. people just don't know know that, you know, about many ap- athletes. You know, like, like we got lives. Like, we not only um, athletes or ballers right. or whatever the case may be. We like right. doing other, thing, other things. But they have to give you that opportunity to do so, right? right. You have a platform. Right. Athletes, celebrities, you have a platform. Exactly. You know, and they... It, why go through life and not have your voice heard, right? Exactly. You have a position, right? You have an opinion. Uh huh. You should be able to give it anytime you, you should want be to. Able to give an opinion anytime, but like a lot of people are, you know, a, a lot of people aren't in favor of that opinion, as you saw some of my last comments, right, uh, about the whole Patrick and Tua thing, man, look. which is crazy, right? Like we all know Patrick Mahomes is great. We like we know that, right? We know that he's great, you right. know, but. Right now, I'm going in like I'm going into a new season right. with a new quarterback who's trying to head in the same direction as Patrick, right. you know, and do great things and lead right. this team to a Super Bowl championship, right. you know. So who's also great. Who who's also great in my our opinion? He just in, in, in my opinion, he just doesn't have the accolades behind he it. He just doesn't so have the as accolades of yet. of yet. Right. So you know, I I mean, I believe in him. It's, it's crazy because people have to understand, like, words matter, context matter, right? Right. So I think a lot of what you what we discussed was taken out of context, right? They, they right. can put their spin on it, but, again, it goes back to we want to have the juicy story, right? We want more clicks. We want more views on the, the story, not the podcast, but the journalists who write that stuff, as opposed to taking an opportunity to really read and look at the whole interview to get the context from it. Right. You weren't down in anybody. You were solely giving your That's opinion. It. That's it. People have to understand the difference between opinion and fact. And right? facts. And um, also, I seen today that um, Robert Griffin III, RG3, he tweeted something about what I said. And right. He basically, you know, said it, I believe, better than me. You know, all Tyreek is doing is just putting confidence into his quarterback, which which is all I'm doing. Right. You know? Right. Like, and you're speaking your opinion, too. I'm speaking my opinion, man. You it's, know? It's, it's I've a, had a chance to play with both of the guys. Yep. You know, Patrick is, is, is very accurate. You know, but I just feel like going into my new season, I play with Tua now, dog. Like, and we see some of the media pundits, some of the, the sports analysts. How it's crazy. You, you practice with him for six hours. You practice with him for six minutes. You practice with him for for but, just but two here's weeks. The you, thing. Play, you ain't played a preseason game with him. Here's like, the thing. God. They haven't practiced with him at all. They, you guys have So been. how is exactly. their opinion what it is? Exactly. Right? You've played with both. You've practiced with him. Whatever you've done with him, you've seen something in Tua that makes you say, right, Pat for the long ball. Right. Tua for the accuracy. So how does so what you're saying is, how does your opinion matter over Tyreek's opinion? Bingo. But that's what they want, right? I, I just don't get it. But they also have to understand on their platform that that's their opinion, but they gotta understand that it's a large mass of people that take their take their opinion as being a fact. As and a that's fact. what happened with, you know, the media pundits, the the journalists. They right. automatically see that person's opinion exactly and they take it as a fact. And now they have a biased perception of who you are and what you actually see it. Exactly, man. So sports world, you see that? You see the way we can just sit here and just take your takes, listen to your opinions, and just say, oh, that's, that's their opinion. That's your opinion. <laughs> that's, hey, that's on you. Right. But you guys, you, you guys just take offense to what I say. I, don't, I have no idea why. Am I, like, am I like the bad guy in the situation? Am I the villain? If so, I want to be Killmonger. We, but <laughs> anyways. <laughs> We got, we got, but we got, we got enlightened earlier, right? We had a conversation with someone and we got enlightened and it was, 
they don't hate you. Nah, they don't. They don't really hate me. They don't hate you. They love the. Ta- it's just they, they it's love just, you. It's just we don't got a relationship. Bingo. You know, so I I, I just don't know. And man. if they had that relationship with you, if they cared to reach out and get that relationship with you, they would understand who you are and understand that that was your opinion, right? And as opposed to you know going jumping down, trying to jump down your throat and go crazy. Oh, oh, he's smoking weed. Yeah, you being facetious, but your suit was Come facetious. On. Come on, man. Yeah, like, I said it. Your suit was facetious, but whatever. That's just what I'm on. But that's my opinion. That's not a fact. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I can talk about Stephen A. suit, Stephen A. Smith suit, right? But that's my opinion because I don't like that sense of fashion, right? I don't have to wear it, also, so I should probably shut up on that aspect, right? Yeah, he, and he, that's what I'm gonna do. He definitely got his suit from Big and Tall. That's like that. He, he, the city <laughs> training guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he walked in in a full. Let me know, get that rug off the floor and <laughs> make it into a suit. But that's uh, our opinion. But that's, that's our opinion, fact, man. Right? You know, we so, know we hope he didn't go into you know whatever store he went into. Whatever got store it from. he went in and got it from, he probably paid like ten G's for that suit. I know it was expensive. It's I can't expensive. afford it. I, but you know the thing about me not being able to afford it, what? I personally wouldn't wear it. There you go. But that's my opinion. But that's your opinion based though. upon my my experiences in life. Right? Exactly. That's not a. It's not. It's not. Facts that his suit was ugly. Exactly. It's just an opinion held by a majority of the Americans. That that, that, <laughs> that is all. <laughs> but anyways, man, so is that all you got, man? That's all I needed to get off my chest, man. You, you Understand lot, the man. difference between a fact and an opinion. Stephen A. Smith, your suit is your suit. Wear your suit. I have no opinion on your suit. That was just to show you what an opinion is. That's not a fact. That's your sense of style. That's your sense of fashion. I have no say so on what you wear, sir. <laughs> you know we had on some bell bottom shoes too. <laughs> now nah, let me stop. But yeah, man, if that's it, uh, do you got anything you need to get off your chest? Because you took a lot of flat. I took a lot of I took a lot of heat last week, man. I took a lot of heat. So since this podcast is first, the only episode, the first episode generated crazy responses, right? Right. And you took a great deal of heat. We heard you possibly smoke weed. We heard <laughs> Crazy, you making right? up stuff. You 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 belligerent. You idiotic. Is right. asinine to think this way. What do you have to get off your chest, man? I took a lot of heat, man. You know, from fans, from analysts, mm-hmm. from family members. It mm-hmm. was crazy. Like last week was probably the craziest week of my life mm-hmm. uh, while playing for the Miami Dolphins. And this is crazier than e- even when I signed too, though. You know, last week it, it went down. Last week in right. the D, it went down in the DM. <laughs> Who sang that song? Gotti, crazy, <laughs> right? So, man, the only thing I, I got to get off my chest is, man, I just want to tell people, man, look, man, I've been playing football my whole life, right? My whole entire life, man. And football is really all I know. Mm-hmm. You know, of course, I played basketball. I ran track. I played baseball. Mm-hmm. You know, I wrestled a little bit. You know, but. Football was my money maker, right? You know, and when I was in high school, you know, I had a chance to really learn about the game of football, right. and you know, I thought I was, you know, I I thought, well, I knew football was gonna take care of me and my family. Mm-hmm. My senior year, man, my senior year of high school, me and my grandparents, we living together. You know, we ain't had no lights for a whole entire year, so I had no electricity. So basically, I was homeless, right? You know, and there would be some nights, like I like, like there would be some nights I wouldn't even. You know, um, there would be some nights, you know, my mom would just cry mm-hmm. all, all night, all night. And then I just wake up and then just go try to, like, comfort her and show her some love. And I, and I can just remember myself telling myself from then on that we'll never, ever live like that ever again right. in, my, in my whole entire life. Mm-hmm. If I'm on this earth, my parents will not live like that. Mm-hmm. And ever since then, I met, so, so then I went to JUCO. But before I went to JUCO, I told my mom, we'll never, ever live like that again. When I come back, I promise you, I'm going to be a millionaire, and then I'm going to move you out of that situation that you're in. Mm-hmm. So let's fast forward today. The reason I play this game is for my family. Mm-hmm. I do this shit for my family, dog. So, man, like, just being able to, to, like, change my family life, change our whole dynamic, you know, being able to take care of my kids, mm-hmm. you know, set my kids up for life, bro. Like, I love playing the game of football. I'm very passionate about it. I love my job, man. But... At the end of the day, dog, I gotta take care of my family, man. Right. You know, because they are the one they are they are the ones who supported me. Mm-hmm. They are the ones who comfort me whenever I'm going through whatever I'm going through in life. You know, so shout out to grandparents, mom, dad, 
everybody, man. So that's why I do this game, and that's why I love this game, dog. And when I signed my deal with the Dolphins, you know, Coach McDaniels and and the owner, Mr. Ross, they they really changed my family life. I signed one with the um, I signed one with the Chiefs, you know, for eighteen million a year. But when when I came to the Dolphins, that that's like a whole new level mm-hmm. of like stardom, you know. So that really changed my family's life, man. So now we like now now we really living different, you know. So man, I'm I'm very committed to this to this Dolphins team, man. To 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 the day I die, and I'm gonna give every ounce, and like I'm here to win a championship, bro. So that's the only thing that I really got to get off my chest, bro. Like I do this for my family, bro. Like right. like I know a lot of people say, uh you selfish, nah, bro. At the end of the day, I I gotta look at I I, I, I gotta look out for what's best for me, right? My kids, my parents, my grandparents, mm-hmm. my girl, like all of that, man. Right. Like I I it's tough. Mm-hmm. It's tough leaving. The, it's tough leaving a situation like we had in Kansas City. It's tough, bro. Right. Then you got one five, arguably the best quarterback in the league, top two, and he not two, bro. Like right. Then you got TK Travis Kelsey. Then you got one of the best head coaches in the league, bro. Right. You know, then the defense were balling last year doing their thing. And then the rest of the superstars on the offense, bro. So, like, it's tough to leave a situation like that, man. So, man, like, I'm just thinking 15 years from now. Right. 20 years from now, you know. Like, 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 I know I'm not supposed to be living that far, man. But I'm thinking about my kids' livelihood, man. Right. You know, I'm thinking about how I grew up. Yeah. How rough it was. It wasn't rough. But it was tough, you know right. what I'm saying? So I'm thinking about my kids growing up, being able to do what they want to do, right. being able to go at whatever college they want to go to, right. being able to go into whatever store they want to go in and say, hey, I want this, right. you know? Because uh, cause as a kid, that was a dream for me, and I got four beautiful kids, and I'm here for them, right. you know? I do this for them, right? you know? And then w- when I'm on that football field playing hard, I do it for my family, I do it for me, and then I'm doing it for this organization, man. So – I'm gonna go hard to the day I die, and that's all I gotta. That's all I gotta say, man. So if anybody want to give me heat for doing what's best for me and my family, then go ahead and give me heat, baby. But I'm, just, I want to. But just know, that. but just know this: keep my kids' name out y'all mouth, dog. Like <laughs> y'all can talk trash to me all day. Y'all can say what yada yada death threat to Mister Cheetah, whatever you want to say to Mister Cheetah. Y'all can do that. But please, man, just let keep my family off off limits, man. Cause that's all I ask. That's all I ask, you know. And the rest is history. Well, I I, I just want to clarify our point because you know they're gonna take it and say, oh, he's he's being a hypocrite. In the first the first episode, he said it wasn't about the money, but they have to understand, as you stated in the episode, and so many people chose to overlook, it was a series of events and the situations that series took place of events that led you to that decision to exactly. say, okay, Drew. Seek the trade, and of course, the Chiefs approved it exactly. And then it went from there. And then at that point, it became who's going to put me in the best financial position. Exactly. So it started with a snow, it was a snowball effect, it was the perfect storm, right? Exactly. I got this issue, this issue, this issue, this issue. I was a great teammate. I didn't go to the media complaining. That's what I don't we do. We didn't go out there complaining about how I felt about you know whether or not I was utilized properly. That's what I don't we didn't do. go out there and go. Uh, complained about touches. Nope. I didn't even go to the head office and make complaints about it. Nope. I kept never. my head down. I nope. did my thing. It's number 10 on the field. Right. As a part of the Chiefs organizations, I balled out. We had great memories, right? Right. right. Great memories. But when it came to uh, a, a signing or a renewing that deal, it just, the the respect, in my opinion, wasn't there. Not the respect for you as a human it was just, being. I, 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 just think, I just think it's just one of them situations where, like, Brett Veach ain't, ain't draft me. Like and, right. this, and this me just being completely honest. Right. Like Brett Vice, he ain't bring me in. Right. Like I was before him. Right. I I John John Dorsey, I feel like is the one that vetted for me because when I first, the first time I went and visit the Chiefs, you know, I had on a collar shirt, a white collar, no, a yellow collar shirt, and I had on some brown, you know, khakis, and the first guy I met was Brett. I mean, was John Dorsey, right? Dude had a lot of energy, and I had a lot of energy right with him, you know. And 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 like we like and we like hit it off mm-hmm. as soon as we met. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, "I'm gonna draft you, dog. Right. I like you. You a ball player, right. and I like you in this building because of the energy that you bring, right? You know." And then he, what do you know? Fifth, fifth round draft pick, day three. Hmm? 
Who is it? Hey, this is John Dorsey. We're going to draft you. Pack your bag. You're you going to be a Kansas City Chiefs. And that's it, man. I just feel like like the mesh one there between me and Brett, Brett Veach. Right. Yeah, we were cool. Like, yeah. yeah, cool. Hey, what's up, Brett Veach? But it wasn't like one of them situations <laughs> like, hey, me, me and JD had. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, I just think it was just one of them situations, man. But so. I want I want people to be clear. This is not a bad blood situation. No, no, no. They nah. ever y'all was just on two two different ends of the spectrum. Yeah, that's just, all it was. Yeah, like I say, man, I, I just wasn't one of Brett Veach's Veech, Veech, guys. Right. You know, right. I just feel like if I if you know I don't I don't know if if I'd have been one of his guys, then he probably would have you know took care of me because I feel right. like every day that I went into that building, I worked hard. You know, I didn't say nothing to nobody. You right. Know, I practiced even sometimes when I couldn't practice. You know, I played through injuries. Even, even though I, I just I did a lot of things, man. So right. I just, I just feel like, um, yeah, I, I I just needed to me, the game is about respect, man. Right. You know, and and that's the way that my parents taught me. You know, so I, I just wish I would have got that. You know, well, that I got I got respect. four questions for you, and I just need a yes or a no answer. All right. Right. Where are you taking a shot at Patrick Mahomes? No, no. Where are you taking a shot at? Uh, and, Travis Kelsey. And here's why. Here, here's why I never take a shot at Patrick Mahomes because I, I like I, I've, I've said this numerous of times. I feel like football is bigger. I, I feel like football isn't bigger than life. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, like me and Patrick can't play this game forever. Right. You know, I, I know. Maybe sometimes not. Maybe not today or tomorrow or five years or ten years down the road. You know. There will be a time that I need to call my brother, right. you know, and right. that's the way I look at it. I never take a shot at, at my brother, man. Why would I do that? You right. know, he like me and him had a connection. Probably, I feel like top fifteen greatest connections of all time. Probably, oh, like who top knows? Three. Top, top who three. knows, man? Yeah. So, like I, I never, I, I never break up. You know what? What uh, me and him had, you know. So, but if you get on Twitter. No, it's a different story. Oh, we're gonna get to that. You get on Twitter, it's like the world, the whole world is about to end. It's like, oh, Tyreek hates Patrick Mahomes. Right. He says Tua is, has better accuracy and he only can throw the ball deep. And I'm like, yo, like, do I need to call Patrick Mahomes and tell him this? But I know Pat know right. that he's like, man, there's no way, man. Right. I just talked to Cheetah at F1. I know we ain't doing that. Right. So, right. No, I'm with you. So, what's your next question? Were you taking a shot at Travis Kelsey? No. Why? No. I said he was the greatest tight end of all time. I got a chance to play with one of the greatest tight ends of all time. Third question. Were you taking a shot at Andy Reid? No. I I never take a shot at one of the greatest head coaches of all time either. Because, right. like, he's the guy who actually helped me, you know, help my game. You know, mm -hmm. like, he's seen a, a ton of fast guys come through. But, like, he's the one guy who who, like, really motivated me to be who I am today. Right. You know, so all shout out to Big Red. Thank you so much, man. Like Cheetah, I always love you as a father, as another father. So thank you so much, Big Red. Fourth question: Were you taking a shot at the entire organization called the Kansas City Chiefs in the Chiefs Kingdom? Nah. See, look, my mom always told me, man, no, don't hold no grudges, don't have no bad blood with anybody. Right. You know, I got all love for everybody. In the building from top to bottom, dog. Right. It don't matter how they feel against me. Right. I know how I feel about them, you know. And it's all love from the cheetah, right. you know, from from Clark Hunt to Brett Veach to Andy Reid to uh, from the whole roster, you know. So right. I got I got number love. So you were merely just going out, and giving your opinion, and giving your side of why things fell apart and yeah, how everything transpired. That's that's all it was. It's just a player, you know, giving his side and his perspective on everything that went on. Last question. I lied. I got five questions. Will you ever just shut up and play? No, I, I, I don't think <laughs> I, I don't think it'll never be a situation where I, where I will ever do that. You know, only time I because I love to talk, man, and I love right. to like you know give people insight on situations like this. Right. You know, because I think it's actually good for the game for people to actually know that. Hey, you know, in my situation, I can't talk for nobody else. You know, I actually wanted to stay in KC. I actually wanted to stay in ball with my brothers. Right. But, you know, things happen, you know, so I had to, you know, teleport to Miami. So here I am today. I'm, I'm happy in this situation. Absolutely. You know, so I'm grateful for this situation. I'm thankful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm looking forward for the challenge. I'm with you. Hey.
Hey, hey, okay, let it be known. I'm working hard when I ain't on the phone. This ain't a hunt, this ain't a phone. Grind never stopping, I'm keeping it cold. Unlocking the door with the holy key. You supposed to be this close to me, and hopefully you understand. G O D, maybe this cold, and I'm talking like no degrees.